We all have different ways of looking at things, but when you're looking for a faster and easier way to do something, it helps to have another viewpoint. Looking at servicing from another viewpoint can often cut down your repair time, and that's what service tips are all about. One of the best tools to use when making vertical output board adjustments is a small tweaker. You make one by cutting off the bladed end of a regular tweaker and putting this piece into a small knob. Tighten down the set screw and you have a handy little adjustment tool that's just right for small work areas. The delay time position control can be aligned quickly by following this method. With the main body properly tightened to the chassis, turn the potentiometer shaft fully counterclockwise until it stops. Next, take the vernier knob and turn it slightly more clockwise than the calibrated position and slide it over the pot shaft. Slowly turn the knob counterclockwise as you tighten the set screw with an Allen wrench. When you reach the calibrated position for the particular scope you're working on, finish tightening the set screw. And that's all there is to it. Here's a procedure that makes timing knob alignment simple and effective. Start by removing the variable knob with an Allen wrench. Turn both A and B knobs to the one or two millisecond position and loosen one of the set screws on the B knob. Then turn the knobs to the XY position and loosen the other set screw on the B knob. Pull the B knob off. Check the A knob for proper alignment, smooth movement, and about a fingernail's width clearance from the front panel. If necessary, adjust the A knob by loosening the set screws on the back of the knob. Before replacing the B knob, turn the B cam switch and the A knob fully counterclockwise. Put the B knob on the cam switch and allow about a fingernail's width of clearance between the B and A knobs. Tighten the first set screw and check for positive detent action. Then turn the knob to a position where the second set screw can be tightened. Make sure the knobs will separate and work independently. Then replace the variable knob and tighten the set screw. Removing and replacing input B and C connectors can be time consuming if you don't have the right tools. Two tools that really do the job are a front BNC spanner wrench and a modified half inch socket and handle. The spanner wrench is listed as tech part number 003-0755-00. The second tool is a 12 point half inch socket that has been ground down and welded to a shaft and handle. An offset ratchet can also be used with an unwelded socket. The socket wrench is used along with the spanner wrench for loosening and tightening BNC connectors. Safety first. You've heard that before, but when it comes to changing CRTs, it's the most important thing to remember. Wear safety glasses and protective clothing to guard against injury. Before removing the CRT, touch the anode lead to the chassis to fully discharge the tube. An important point to keep in mind is that CRTs have a habit of building up another charge after short discharges. So leave the anode lead shorted to the chassis for at least a minute to ensure full discharge. If the CRT isn't fully discharged, you may be shocked when you remove it from the scope. And if this causes you to drop the CRT, you could be injured by the implosion. Once you remove the CRT from the scope, handle it with care. Avoid hitting the CRT against anything that would cause an implosion. Always follow the safety procedures outlined in the service manuals to protect yourself and the equipment. Many motherboard components can be removed and replaced without removing the board itself. 
To remove a defective low voltage rectifier, break it apart with pliers or diagonal cutters. Then cut off any remaining leads. Remove the solder lead fragments from the board with a soldering iron and desoldering aid or solder wick. Next, take the new rectifier and bend the leads to provide clearance for the oscilloscope case. Insert the leads into the motherboard and solder them. Be sure to use a soldering iron with a power rating from 15 to 40 watts. Irons rated above 40 watts will cause damage to the motherboard due to excessive heating. A small angled soldering tip on a 15 watt soldering iron is an ideal tool for potentiometer replacement on the motherboard. Break the defective part off the board with pliers. To prevent damage to the board or circuit runs, put a piece of cardboard underneath the pliers. Remove any excess solder with a desoldering aid or solder wick. Next, hold the replacement pot and solder the leads into the holes with the angled soldering tip. This tip allows you to make the best solder connection without damaging the pot or other parts on the board. Here's a fast and simple way to remove the high voltage oscillator transistor in the 475 line. After removing any applied power, unsolder the delay line and pull the coaxial cables out of the connectors on the preamp board. Turn the scope on its top and take off the high voltage cover. Then remove several of the rear and center screws that hold the preamp board in place. Next, take a quarter inch end wrench and remove the preamplifier bracket. Pull the oscillator transistor connections from the motherboard. Take the end wrench and remove the nuts holding the transistor bracket in place. With the scope tilted up, Slide the bracket out while slightly bending the preamp board. Once the bracket is free, the transistor can be easily replaced. And to reinstall the bracket and transistor, simply reverse the procedure. Give these service tips a try, and you'll cut down your repair time and increase your effectiveness.